Hello and welcome to All for United with me, John Foster, MUFC, uh, Friday Night Fan Forum. We've got Andy and Atano with us tonight. How you guys doing? Andy, you okay? Not too bad, mate. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. These weeks go really quickly. I just said to Atano, it only seems like yesterday. Um, Atano from the United Star. How you doing, mate? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me today. No problem, mate. How is that uh, podcast and YouTube channel going, mate? Yeah, like this to slow down a bit because of the Euros, the knockout stages are on, but we'll start again after the Euros end. Just out of curiosity, because I've never actually asked you this, uh, what, what's the plan for that channel regarding like, the women's team? So obviously I know that you kind of head up the women's team uh, on that. What's your thoughts next season or what, what are you going to uh, be looking at doing on that, uh, mate? <clears throat> Like uh, for the men's team, we do a match preview and a match review after every game. Brilliant. So basically, we'll do s- something similar to that. I'm and you know, the transfer news and everything. That's brilliant. I'm looking forward to um, looking forward to seeing that. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, um, the, the top topics tonight um, has to be um, what we've been seeing on Twitter the last couple of couple of uh, days. Um, Keir Simon, uh, Australian striker from PSV. Uh, we mentioned it yesterday, but it's um, if if it was if he was in doubt yesterday, thinking that she might have gone to Aston Villa, it looks like that that now is not going to happen. So I'm just going to read out a few quotes. Emma Sanders has been talking. Um, I believe her name is Catherine Bat or Bait. I'm not too sure exactly how you pronounce it. I do apologise. Um, so I was going to read out a few quotes, a few a few articles here and there. And uh, that'll lead us into our first topic of, of, uh, of Andy's. So I've got it written down in front of me. Emma Sanders, as always, uh, has been saying, um, just on PSV's uh, Kia Simon, as far as I know, she has, she was set to join Aston Villa. Um, a deal and personal teams were sorted, but another WSL team came in with a more lucrative offer. Um, and that was according to uh, Catherine uh, reporting um, uh, uh, Catherine reporting that Man United were interested. Uh, we saw that on the Mail Online yesterday, which uh, I'll read out shortly. Um, but before we got into this, I thought to myself, okay, how, how reliable, how credible is Catherine? Um, so after doing a little bit of research and a little bit of asking behind the scenes, everyone is saying that um, what she's saying is she wouldn't say it if she didn't have some something behind it. So I think that's really good news. Uh, when it comes to credibility and it's not just um, a bit of idle gossip, I think that there is something really there. Um, and if you go on to Catherine's Twitter, she does also talk a bit about Martha Thomas and also I'm going as far as saying that she thinks that that deal might be done uh, before the end of this week. So that only leaves really a couple of days. So maybe that will be one of our first announcements. So our first two strikers, you know, potentially are going to be those two and uh, announced sooner rather than later. Um, I just want to go into... Um, the Mail Online article. I read it yesterday, but I never actually mentioned it on the show. So um, she starts off talking about Lauren James to Chelsea and a possible replacement. But I just want to uh, get into exactly what she's put. Um, United don't want to lose a youngster, meaning LJ, um, but have begun looking for replacements with PSV's Keir Simon, uh, a possible option. Australian international uh, age 30 would bring a vast amount of experience to United's relatively young team. The Red Devils com- confirmed the departures of the American duo Crescent Heath last week and are in need of strengthening their squad ahead of next season. Um, and as you goes on to other Australians as well. So, Andy, now's a good time to kind of bring in your topic. Um, so, I was going to talk a little bit about about this. Um, so, yeah, what are your thoughts on this one, mate? Um, basically, I'm just sort of bring, opening up the transfers a little bit, you know, as a topic. And more specifically, I think we'll just do it this way, really. You know, what is everybody's view if you had a player who was uh, pretty much a given for the national team, played regularly for over 10 years in the equivalent of the European Cup, uh, your, um, two Olympics and several World Cups, might not be an out-and-out striker, but is a hard worker. I would imagine you'd, you'd have the situation where, you know, those superimposed pitches you know, that they did for some of the bigger players and never turned up and you'd have like, you know, team, you know, this player and all this kind of thing. But actually, you're not. That player is Kaya Simon that that we've just been discussing. And I was just using as reference our Australian expert, who's obviously a friend of the show, who uh, was referring to uh, to it this morning on, on some of the sort of other areas of Twitter, really. I mean, I think 
people need to give their head a wobble. I'm going to channel my inner Ben. You know, dearie, dearie me, as he would say. You know, um, the, the woman's 30, not 65. You know, mo modern modern um, physiotherapy techniques, modern training techniques. You know, people are talking about Ronaldo in the men's game. He's 37. Messi's 34. You know, um, she's 30. And actually, my main sort of focus really is, you know, what, what are we doing? Uh, as a fan base, uh, and, and I, I want to caveat this because obviously we've got a global red tonight, but some of the global reds, you know, I, I think that they wouldn't necessarily know the point where Manchester is on the map. And part of the match isn't the 90 minutes, it's the sort of like discussion on Twitter and, and that kind of which is fine. That's what we're all doing here, you know. But I think when we go a bit OTT, I've seen comments off so called like massive international fans saying, you know, she's looked at Villa, so we should just drop her like a stone. You know, um, she's she's over the hill at thirty. I mean, I mean, come on. Mm. You know, I mean, if you look at a biology textbook, you're the quickest. You you are you are the um, you are the quickest at your sprinting at the age of twenty eight. Like medically, that is your, that is the quickest. If you were a runner, that's the quickest you get. She's thirty. And, you know, if you look at some of the information regarding her, she's played for, you know, a number of teams in Australia, Melbourne City, Sydney FC. And she's played a bit in America for Houston Dash. And, OK, she's only scored a, a smaller number of goals uh, for PSV because she's mainly been on the bench. Um, I mean, at the end of the, at the, end of the day, we're kind of going from one extreme to another. LJ isn't the finished article. She, you know, obviously, if she stays, of course, we'll still support her. But the big issue that, as I said last last Friday, was she doesn't pass. It was almost like a joke, you know, when we're on the, on the side. And she's got a lot to learn. And we could get away with it in the championship because you could take on eight people like you're playing FIFA and score. But when, when, when we were playing against Arsenal or Chelsea, defence, You'll get one, but the other one, they're just gonna they're just gonna make you go into a blind alley or you're gonna be you're gonna you're gonna lose the ball. And that happened time out of time again. And I would say actually, for at the point of our development, in a in, in a in a time where in the women's game the maximum you get is two three year contracts. Actually, swap swap swapping a a nineteen year old to a thirty year old isn't necessarily a bad idea. Because we're not saying that she's got to be there till she's 38, 39. You know, if you get her from 30 to 33, you know, you're still going to get her in her prime. And I, I would just I would just say people need to stop being so... Well, if you need to play, if you were on the bench for this club, or if you went to speak to PSV for this club, I don't want to talk to you. Well, it's the same player. People just need to focus on the fact that, you know... We've all got jobs inside of this. Sometimes you can just be in the wrong, wrong place at the wrong time. She can come to United and suddenly start scoring, like looking at this. She's like 2014, 2017. Actually, just looking a bit, yeah, but yeah, 2014, 2017, she played for Sydney FC, scored 12 goals in 27 games. 2009, 2013, it was 23 goals out, out, out of uh, 41 appearances. She might just need a chance. Let's give her that chance and let's just stop being idiots. Um, I think that's really well put, to be honest. I think, um, look, we all look at um, these glamour name signings. We look at age. Look, the ideal scenario is that you sign uh, a Manchester player at the age of 18 who's going to start scoring loads of goals right away. But let's be honest, that's not going to always going to be, be the case because you, you need that experience. And I know a signer is going to talk about a mixture of ex experience and youth in his topic a little bit later but i think it is it is important that we that we actually remember that we've got russo who's young who's hardly had any minutes fuso who's very young and still very inexperienced and uh, we don't know what other strikers are going to come in it looks like maybe martha thomas is um again not used to playing at a high level we we do need someone experienced um, and just because that age of 30 kind of puts a lot of people off because it's not in the 20s but as we were discussing before the actual match, 30 isn't old. It's like it's not like it's 33, 34. I would say it's 
you say it's prime, I would say it's probably like a couple of years after prime, but you're still in your prime. Maybe your prime lasts from maybe between 26 and maybe 31, 32. You've got that experience, yeah. you've got that know-how. You've got that European experience you've talked about. She's a winner. Uh, Casey Stoney said we're after winners in our team. So I, I, I can understand it. Um, look, people are going to freak out because she's not a glamour name signing um, and uh, she's not maybe a recognised goal scorer at the elite level, maybe. Um, but to me, let, like I said, I think you hit the nail on the head. We need to start giving some players chances because we're looking at our budget, we're looking at who we're linked with. This is probably like the, the, the highest part of maybe the second kind of tier of player. Um, that we can kind of get. So, um, I, what, do you want to just come back on that, Andy, before I bring this on? I mean, I mean, yeah, to me, yeah, I, no, I, definitely. I mean, definitely. I mean, I think, I think the thing is, the thing is, when it comes to players and what seems to have happened in the women's game, and I have only really, to a point where I'm doing podcasts focused on the women's game. I haven't got the experience that yourself has got on the men's, and obviously, I'm, I know I was looking at the men's side. But certainly Women's Day, what seems to happen is once a group of Australians or a group of Americans or whatever, once they land at a club, their mates seem to appear as well. Yeah. And, um, you know, and and everyone needs to remember Joe Montemiro, who was, you know, ostensibly a very good manager. You know, he won the WSL with, um, with, with, with Arsenal. What he did before he came over was Melbourne City. He was in the W League, which, which everybody would say is obviously a lower, a lower level league to ourselves, but obviously he was a fantastic manager for Arsenal. And I, and I do think, you know, I do think that, there's, you know, we, we, if, 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 if Carla Simon does come to ourselves, you know, and she has a great time at United, that she, they go, they go and they go to these squad, these squad camps, they mention it. And then lo and behold, all the Australians will appear and, you know, and all right, she's not an out and out goal scorer apparently. And, you know, and I've been the one who's been drilling that home. But we, we don't know what the final number is and we don't know how many transfers are coming in. If she's a hard worker and is brilliant at setting people up, she could be being brought in purely to set up X player we don't know about yet. Yeah. And, 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 and again, you know, I would say Leah Galton was out of football, not even signed to a team before we got her and she is by far our best player i'm not saying we've made some mistakes in relation to 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 to, to some transfers that we've got uh and and you know it could be that we could just be making the same sort of bargain basement situation but i think a lot of more experienced man united fans are thinking glazers are going bargain basement you know they're going for the the cheaper version they're going for the people that are knocking around for the lower lower teams of wsl and actually, I don't think they are. You know, you don't get in the Australian team if you're not good. You don't stay in the Australian team unless you're not good, you know, unless you perform. And, you know, there must be a, a marker that they're looking at if she's not putting the goals in. As I said, she could be great at assists. And to be honest, if we had someone who was blooming good at just getting in that position, boom, passing it, rather than going for glory, it's like the opposite to LJ. Mm. So if you've got someone who's, who's, who's really happy to be unselfish and just be an assist machine and get in the right positions, then, you know, you could argue that's even even better sign. We're not going to know until the old come in. Yeah. Or I think, I mean, you know, innocent until proved, you know, until proven guilty really has to be the order of the day. I think it's also interesting to think as well with the description that we're getting. Obviously, we've been speaking to Ben Gilby. We've seen a few comments from journalists. We've got people in the comments here. Um, it also opens up a situation where we don't need to play um, the same kind of formation that we've been playing for the last three years. So she could potentially play with another striker, maybe like two up top, which a few people have been calling for in the past. So we've got Russo as a more out and out goal scorer. Uh, and maybe um, Simon could come a little bit deeper try and collect the ball, and then she's going to feed Galton, the right winger, Hanson potentially, and Russo in front of us. That's another way of potentially playing. Um, and maybe she'll be competing with Tooney as well a little bit there. Um, so it does open up um, a lot. Um, I was going to read, read a couple of comments. So I think John Foy's kind of saying that we're not going to get elite players this summer as we're not in the Champions League. I guess what Andy and I guess what I'm thinking as well is um, elite players are, are the players who are going to be really expensive, high wages, whose household names, who's going to cost a lot of money, who's going to be um, 
be playing in Champions League and the, and the top two or three teams in their league. Um, whereas maybe the players that we've been going for, maybe they're like on the way to being elite or on the way to reaching the potential. I, I agree that at the age of 30, you think that she may have gone past it. But when you come to Manchester United, you know, and you've still got two or three years of, of your prime still to go. And again, you know, though. And yeah. again, with the right with the right squad and, and the getting access to the male uh, physios and stuff like that, Carrington a bit more, you could go five years. You could go to at least 35. Yeah, it's true. And this is what we're saying, John, for all last season. We needed a plan B and we, and we never really had it. Maybe this is a, 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 maybe this is a plan B. Um, we've got to try and, like, obviously, look at all, all different angles. Um, Atanu, uh, obviously, when you saw these, uh, these uh, stories that came out yesterday, I saw it yesterday on the Mail Online, uh, what we all thought on, on this player and this potential signing? I think uh, Andy's right. And, you know, John Fry also said that uh, we need some experience in our squad. So, I, I don't like this idea of judging a player before sh uh, he or she has even, even arrived into the team. So, I agree to Andy there that she's just 30 years old. It's not like she's 65. Mm. Uh, so, I, I think signing her would be a good idea because... As I said in the last show, that we have a good starting eleven uh, with respect to the midfielders and the attackers, if all stay fit. So Garten on the left, Russo is starting uh, up front, and right wing maybe Tony or Hansen might be there. So I think we need squad players, and why not give Simon a chance or Martha Thomas a chance? So uh, and you know I know that we haven't qualified for the UWCL, and. Uh, KC left, so there's there's a lot of vagueness around the club right now. But at the same time, I think getting these players would do the uh, squad well because these these are basically squad depth signings, which may which who might uh, you know integrate into the starting eleven fully. But let's see what happens over there. Uh, I am a bit skeptical about uh, Simon because from what I've heard is that she is on the bench. But at the same time, I don't want to judge her because who knows, she might come to United and be a big breakthrough star for us. Well, that's the thing, just because she's like on the bench, it's all the teams, you know, that could be um, because of any reason. It could be like, you know, you look at uh, the men's game at the time because I know that you follow that, follow that. Van der Beek's been on the bench for the men's team, but it was absolutely quality at his previous club. So I think um, it all depends on who you're playing with and if Manchester United can bring the best out of her then that would be great to see. Um, I, I was just going to say as well, I think it also depends. I, I'm looking forward to this as well because Thomas and Simon could potentially be better than Siggy and Ross. Um, so if you're looking at the two players who've come out, who've come out, can these two new players be not better than Siggy was in the first season and not harder working than Siggy because obviously we saw that not necessarily better than Ross in her prime a few years ago, but as things stand, Siggy hardly played, Ross hardly played. Um, let's get these two new players in and let's just see what they can do. We're not saying that they're going to be better than Tarbin Heath. Uh, we're not saying that they've got, they're world-class players like Kristen Press, but if you look at on year one year, potentially you could look at it that these two new players could bring in more goals um, than Siggy and uh, Ross did last season. Um Andy, it was your kind of uh, point. Do you want to kind of just kind of finish up on that one a little bit? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm just base. I'm just looking at what I can see, and you know, and I think people, especially on this side, obviously the globe, can focus so much on the you know, your Champions League, and it and it is obviously the Premier Club competition, but experience in other in other things, you know, isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I think you know, Atano's point is 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 very very strong. You know, um, at the end of the day, when it, you know, what makes an elite player, you know, uh, is, is an interesting question. You know, we are going to have to be clever in relation to um, the way we pick squad play, uh, players off other teams. Whoever, If we do get a hit and it goes really well, that person's probably going to have been on the bench wherever they came from. And sometimes that's a good idea because what, you know, that person has, has been there for the big game, you know, seeing everybody lined up, sat on the bench, just wishing they were playing, not playing. And then for a proper player through a short career, especially in the women's game, I'm sticking away, I'm on the bench. Great game on Saturday, I'm on the bench. Suddenly a club comes along and says, want to play every game? 
you know, um, and sometimes that can reset a player, you know, and actually they could then play a lot better and look like a different player than the one for the other team because they've suddenly been given an opportunity and somebody said, look, I believe in you. I think, you know, you didn't do act well in this team, but this is a new team, you, you know, and I think United in themselves, you know, the ethos of United, as far as I can tell from my experience with the, with the fan base now, is, is to be an attack player attacking exciting football. And when they deviate from and we start doing, you know, the famous chant of 1-0 to the Arsenal or boring, you know, that kind of style of thing. It, we can do it for a bit, but it isn't on our DNA. It isn't what we are. It isn't what we should be in the women's game. You know, it comes from the men's, it comes from Fergie, it comes from that kind of thing. But I, I think, you know, I'll, I'll sort of call out the elephant in the room in relation to transfers a little bit. Um, She's left now. Um, I'm not going to sort of pick directly player, but the worst transfer we ever made is Jane Ross. And I think, and I think the problem is everybody is seeing ghosts everywhere. Is this the next Jane Ross? Is this the next Jane Ross? Oh my God, is this the next Jane Ross? And it's like, we're going, we're, we're, we're going to miss players and we're not going to support them. Uh, well, I will, but, you know, if we keep looking for the ghost of Jane Ross to appear, you know, and I wish the player well, if she plays, you know, if Jane goes somewhere else and, smashes it fantastic for them um but for us it never worked out and and it was a bad sign but i do i do think that you know just stupid things because martha thomas played played at man uh, played at west ham people are like it's going to be like jane ross <laughs> yeah she's also a woman does that mean she's going to be like jane ross you know do, how how similarities do you want do you, do you want to play you know and and I, and I you know and right until the point of the end of last season i wanted her to to, to um to turn it around, but she just she was just terrible for Man United, and uh, 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 you know, uh, and at the end of the day, that's a bit strong than you would probably imagine in the women's game. But if it was a men's podcast, if it was a men's, you would hear someone say, "Oh, they're terrible for Chelsea," or "They're terrible for United," and that and that would be it. And they probably even swear and use a, a stronger noun than that, you know. Uh, but yeah, just just to end just to end the sort of area. I mean, if she comes to us, I hope that people. You know, do give her that sec that chance, and if we do end up with a group of signings, two, three, four, five signings, the lower part of the WSL from random teams you never heard of in France or Holland or whatever, you know, or Australia, you know, we're going to get silly season because we haven't got a manager at the moment. Well, we have got a manager. I'm pretty damn sure we've got a manager signed, sealed, delivered, but some brainiac hasn't announced it yet. You know, and once and once that's announced. It will settle down. Um, and obviously, I just more stuff to talk about before the, the season starts, you know. But I think I think that's that's what it is, you know. PSV, beyond the bench of PSV, is that, testing my Dutch knowledge here, is that better than being a starter for insert middle mid-table Dutch team that you can probably think of and I can't? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just um, to add to what uh, Andy yeah. said, I just wanted to say that uh, he's absolutely right that uh, right now Simon is on the bench, according to many people. So there's this extra push that she has in mind that, okay, when I get my chance, I'll re I'll be ready to fire. And when United come calling, and of course, uh, it's a big club. United are a big club. And she might get the chance and maybe she'll deliver. So that's right. Uh, I agree to Andy there that uh, she's on the bench right now. And maybe when we uh, knock on her door and you know, just tell her that, okay, we want you to play for us. So maybe we'll see fire all guns. Um, Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> has come up with a question and you, you've kind of just answered it, Andy, saying, why aren't we linked with the manager? I think I think that's been done ages ago. Um, it's just it's just not been announced. And I think a lot of signings have been done ages ago and it's just not been announced. And Man United are very good at trying to get the best um, reaction to an announcement um, in the sense of, obviously, Sancho. There's no... There's no um, coincidence that uh, the, the Sancho signing happened when there was a two-day break in the Euros, when he could potentially fly home, get some photos of him holding a new shirt, which is probably done right now, whilst having the medical. Because obviously England don't play again till tomorrow. That's probably just happened. Um, there's, no, there's no coincidence. John Foy's been saying that we would announce a new manager on the 1st of July. We've ended up doing the Sancho pretty much near the, near the 1st of July, um, because that's when the new sponsor came and this, that and the other. 
Um, I think what it is is that they're probably waiting for maximum exposure. You know, if they have released uh, the new manager or a new signing on the same day as Sancho or a day after Sancho, it would just get lost. So I think them looking at it as like, okay, let's drag it out a little bit. And then when Sancho got maybe goes there and we'll introduce something for the women's team. And then when that goes there and maybe Sancho holding up a shirt. And I think they'll look at it like that because at the end of the day, that's what that's what Man United do. It's it is more like a business and we know how much how important it is to get clicks and stuff like that uh, on social media. And I think this is the way to do it. Um, there was one other question on here and I hope that I can remember seeing it. Where's it gone? Oh, uh, Mannion was uh, mentioned in the comments. Um, I, 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 yeah, well, I think that deal has been done as well. I think that I think that's going to happen as well. Just from what I don't think there's any smoke with their fire. I think there's some rumours come and go. I think that rumour has been there for quite a while. We've had a couple of journalists on. I think one was very confident. One was like 50-50 at the time. The name's still going around. We've seen on Twitter today. Um, I'd be surprised if, if she didn't come to United. Um, does anyone want to just jump in on that one at all? Andy, do you think, do you think um, Mannion is going to end up uh, at United? I mean, it, obviously, she's a defender, so it's different, isn't it? But um, it's kind of the domestic version of what we've just been talking about. Oh, she's not that. She's not really, uh, you know, that, that's going on. And I, you know, and I saw a, I saw a, a tweet today when she was, you know, jokingly got a poll on her Twitter asking what she should, what hat, what hat she should wear, um, you know, for a, a signing. And that's the kind of personality that we want, really, isn't it? Um, you know. Uh, if she's going to interact with social media that much now, uh, you know, um, again, is, is that going to be better because she plays for City at the minute? Is that is that better? Is, is that going to make everybody happier? You know, um, I I think I, I, as a as a person, I naturally I said it on other other um, shows. I like games where if you score three, we win because we score four. So I don't. I naturally don't pay as much attention to our defence, which is possibly why I'm not a manager or not actually involved in football. I like I like the stuff that happens further down the pitch, you know. Um, so maybe uh, you know, and and you can look at look at that. Maybe call his thoughts on the defence because I know I know maybe you look at it a bit closer than I do. But it, she sounds like someone that can slot in definitely. Uh, Atana, we've been looking at defenders. We, we um, was it was it yourself who set the question last week or the week before about defence being more important than strikers? I think um, regarding the transfer window, I can't remember what the result of that poll was, but that was a great poll. So many people got involved, and so many it was, it was so tight. I think it was like 60-40 one way or the other. But it looks like potentially this is our um, first defender that's going to be signing with us. Um, her links with another one, a Champions League player. But um, it looks like Manion might be the one that joins us. Is, is that someone that you're looking forward to seeing at um, Atalio? I'll be honest, I haven't seen much of Manion. And I was talking to Namrata, so shout out to Namrata in the comments. So she told me that uh, she was one of the uh, Manion was one of the best centre backs when she was at Birmingham, and then she joined City and got an ACL injury. So maybe you know she's she's not had the time to shine at City, uh, and. Let's see what happens. Like I, I, I don't want to judge her be before she arrives, uh, but let's see what happens. And I think uh, addition adding Mannion, who's playing in the WSL, who's played in the WSL, is going to be good. And uh, I, I know she put out a tweet today, and you know she deleted it afterwards. And I had to ask people what what it was, what it was, and you know people were joking and you know posting the hats of United, the oval one, and I don't know what. So yeah, she she seems she seems to be a, a funny player and you know someone who interacts with fan maybe, maybe. Uh, and that that's what uh, me as a fan I want that a player should interact with fans as well on social media because for me I can't be there at Manchester. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, no, I'm, I, 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 you know, I do love global words. Honestly, I do. You know, it's not. Uh, but I think especially even for people that are in the northwest, you know, in COVID, we don't know what our interaction is going to be once we even though the rules might have gone on paper and we might be reliant more on online interactions but again to get online interactions we need to be <laughs> one of the better words somebody need to behave themselves a little bit you know because let, let's be honest if if um if carly simon is, is going to start sign you know and um and then does a similar sort of um poll 
are we going to get someone going, you should get a taxi and go away because we don't want you or something stupid like that, you know. But just, just to the final point in relation to, um, you know, on the bench versus starting, Mary Ertz, which I'm very biased of because I think mean, she's a great person and a great player. Um, but she was, she was, um, you know, Wolfsburg's sub basically. She was, she did not play at all really for Wolfsburg, and she come in and been our number one. I know goalkeeping is quite a unique position in that respect. But I think that's another example. There's so many examples you can bring to to say, you know, let let's not judge a just yet. Yeah, and uh, just like uh, like I'll, I'll I'll give an example of uh, a men's player, Edinson Cavani. During his last season in PSG, he wasn't playing much for them because they had signed another player. But he arrived at United and you know just smashed it. Yeah, it's a chance for a new start, isn't it? And the player will be up for it uh, as well. So um, look, if, the, if these players do come in, which it looks like that they are, um, we'll all get behind them, and it's exciting because. If, they're part of your club now, aren't they? So you've got to get behind them. And I know 95% of the fan base, probably 100% of the fan base at LSV will get behind them. And um, it's a new start, new era, new manager. And obviously, excited to see what they all bring. Um, Atanu, uh, what was your topic, mate? Yeah, I wanted to talk about how it's important to focus on both youth and uh, experienced players. So, like, we saw this season that Ella Tooney was on fire. Like, I really like Tooney. Uh, for the way she plays for us. And then we had Tobin Heath and Christian Press, who are experienced players. So that was a you know, unique mixture when to Tobin was uh, firing all guns. Then uh, people used to say, oh my God, Tony isn't playing well. And once uh, the likes of Christian Press and Tobin Heath uh, couldn't perform or were injured, then Tony just was on fire. And you know all the wins that we've had in the absence of... Uh, Tobin Heath because we had a lot of injuries at that time. Tobin Heath, Russo, Carlton, Lad. So, a uh, huge uh, respect to Tooney because she, you know, carried the team. And in a way, like, uh, we win because we score goals. So, in that respect, I wanted to, you know, give a shout out to Tooney. Of course, all other players played well as well. But uh, in this respect, I wanted to focus on Ella. And uh, we saw... Uh, in Again, I'll give an example of the men's team. We saw that Mason Greenwood and Edinson Cavani, uh, a huge age gap, around 10-15 years of age gap between them. But they have been playing well together. So, we'll take an example of, like, that. that's, that's the two examples that I wanted to take. Uh, and that's what I'm trying to say that instead of focusing just on experience or, you know, just saying that, okay, we'll bring in a 28-year-old or a 25-year-old, we need to focus on the youth as well and develop players. I think we commented, I think, uh, I don't know if Natalie was on the show or if she was in the comments, but I think she was around. I think we was basically saying that, uh, we might have even been on the group chat now, I can't remember, but the age is just a number. And if, if you're good enough, it doesn't matter what your age is. Uh, obviously, we've, we've mentioned the 30-year-old uh, tonight. If you're still banging the goals, that's absolutely fine. And then we mentioned how young Tooney is. Obviously, I think she's 21, is she now? Or I think she's 21, I could be wrong. Um, doesn't matter to me. I think it's it's all about how good you are on the pitch. There are some some players um, are more experienced at a younger age, especially if they've gone out on loan, or it depends on what club they've been with at the time as well and in their development. Um, just just as a curiosity, Atana, what what do you think of our blend at the moment? So if you look at our starting eleven, um, based on last season, obviously without the likes of Press and Heath, do you think that we need more experience, or do you think that we need more youth? I think uh, Jackie Gronan bring, bring, brings in the experience. Amy Turner bring in the uh, brought the experience. Herbs brought the experience. Uh, then the likes of Tony Batie, they all brought the you know youth firepower. So I guess the blend was pretty well. But now that we are seeing that many many players have left, so I don't know. We'll focus on the youth or we'll focus on experience this time. Andy, what are your thoughts on that one, mate? Well, again, it's funny, isn't it? We all, you all start just looking at United and now we're starting to look at more worldwide WSL. You know, you just can't help but look keep your ears to the ground on these things. You know, I think it's interesting to throw in the um, in the mix here that the Portland Fawns have just signed a 15-year-old. Mm -hmm. And um, after going to bat with the equivalent of their FA, uh, to get her, to get her in because he had a rule that anybody under eighteen can't play, 
And this particular player, her name, if I'm going to pronounce it right, is Olivia Maldry, M-O-U-L-D-T-R, uh, T-R-I-E. Um, she is a midfielder, apparently, and is apparently basically the next, you know, insert fantastic player here. I'm not saying we should go that young, but, um, you know, it is an interesting question, isn't it? If you find someone young, I mean, going back to the men's game, was it Rooney 15 when he played for our, um, Everton initially? Uh, you know, when he first made his debut, he didn't play every game, obviously. Um, you know, and I think, you know, as Hannah was saying with the blend of, of experience and youth, because they do learn off each other. Um, I think, you know, when, um, you know, Amy Turner left, when, um, you know, um, Kirsten Press and Tobin left, there was play, there was tweets of other players that were not just saying, sad to see you go. It was like, I learned from you. It was great learning from you. I think I think LJ tweeted something similar to that, you know. And I, and I think historically, United again talk about playing the United way in DNA, likes youth and brings in youth. You know, with the famous quote on the men's side, "You'll never win anything with kids." Off Arn Hansen in the in the nineties before the big sort of Beckham era that started. And I think that's that's the selling point of United, and we shouldn't run away from that in the women's game, you know. If we can develop, develop players and they stay and they develop brilliantly, then then great. You know, in a way, that's cheaper than picking them already fully developed later down the line. But you do you do need a mixture. I mean, I agree that you don't want to be picking someone who's mainly got one or two years left because we can't have any deadwood, especially in the WSL, because there's a limit on squad numbers. Every player has to really... I know you wouldn't play every player every game, but every player has to have enough energy in the tank to play every game because you haven't got the luxury of big, big squads where you can sort of, oh, we'll have him because he's good in the rain or have him because, you, you, uh, you know, or her obviously in the women's game because she's good in cups or you ha everyone has to be able to, you know, play a lot more. And it's interesting to say about Ella Toon. I mean, again, I heard a lot of negative things, you know, privately about her when we were playing, when we were watching various games or watch alongs. Um, but she, she, you know, she's the only one who's in the, in Team GP or England Plus, really. Let's be honest, in Tokyo, and you know, and actually, you might find with a new England manager, um, more of our more of our English-born players obviously will end up in the international setup. And there seems to have been a weird thing of you know, if a player goes to England when Phil Neville was manager. It was like a weird trade-off in reverse. You gave them a good player, you got a damage one back because of, for some reason, the way Phil Neville was. But luckily, he's semi-retired playing in, you know, leading into Miami at the minute. So we can we can leave him over there. And hopefully, we'll get, you know, in the New England manager after the um, Olympics, then, um, you know, we can, uh, we, can, we can have a better manager at club level and we can have a better manager at, at international level. Um, so yeah, just to recap then, um, just before we move on to the final topic, um, it looks very likely that Martha Thomas is uh, going to join us uh, and potentially be announced in the next few days. Um, that's according to uh, Catherine Batter. I I'm, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong again, but please just let me know if anyone knows how to pronounce your name or Catherine, if you're watching, get into the uh, inboxes and let me know how you pronounce your name. Uh, Emma Sanders as well, as um, pretty much confirmed that um, the player um, who we've been on about most of the show, Kia Simon, um, won't be going to Aston Villa now, even though the deal was practically done. Instead, someone else has swooped in, uh, another WSL club uh, with a better offer, and Catherine has uh, hinted that it's Manchester United. So that's what we've been talking about towards the start of the show. Um, let us know in the comments uh, what you think of those two players. We're going to move on to our final topic of the show. Uh, this is about um, transfers that have already happened. So obviously on the fan the fan forum, we talk about anything that we want to talk about. Uh, I want to talk about um, some of our previous signings, who's done well, and maybe who's left, who we kind of regret leaving. So I think just to kind of like get a bit of structure behind the conversation, how about we choose uh, Casey's top five signings and put your top five signings in the comments as well um, that she's made. So obviously we're not talking about the original 21. We talk about any other signing from there. So um, I'm, I'm going to start it off. I've got my, I've got six of it in there, um, but I'm only going to be able to say five. So I'm going to start off with Jackie Weldon. 
Uh, obviously, I was probably one of the first players that we've signed who I actually knew, um, because obviously coming from Manchester United, not a women's football fan. Um, all the Barmy Army were saying names that I never heard of, but I did actually hear them as Jackie Gronin. So really excited about that one. Obviously, it was the World Cup at the time, wasn't it, as well? So, yeah, um, I was really excited about that. Obviously, the first season, um, I think she found her feet. I think she worked really hard, but the maybe the um, goal of attributions probably wasn't there. I think this, this season, she was in our top three. A lot of people would have said probably the second player, of the, the second player of the season, maybe underneath Ona. Um, so yeah, I think Jackie for me was probably. I'm not saying Casey's top signing, but it's definitely in the top five. Um, I think she's going to go from strength to strength. I think a lot of uh, people now think Jackie should be captain. Um, you know, I never like to remove a captain's armband from anyone. I think it could sometimes do more harm than good. But if ever, then the Amy Turner is left, if uh, Casey is not on the pitch, then maybe it could be Jackie. Um, Andy, what are your thoughts on um, on, on the Jackie on, on Jackie? Yeah, I mean, I, the the mostly when I wear a shirt, it's an old fur kit from last season, and the name on the back was Jackie Gronin. Um, you know, I think she would be a good. I think she would be. A, I think she was one of our best signings. Um, I'd also include Mary Earps on that, but as I say, could be a little bit biased. But again, you know, I would say you know Honor. Would be another one. Um, I know we're all trying to avoid that. I have to pronounce the surname because I've heard it so many times. I'm not really sure, um, you know, how, how, how it works. But I think, again, you know, Russo, I think, will eventually fall under that list. But again, she got injured very quickly, unfortunately. Um, and I would say, yeah, I mean, I would say, and, and just broaden it out slightly as well with what you were saying about people that we missed she won't come up in the the premise because it was an original 21 mm. actually ebony simon shouldn't have been let go yeah um amy palmer might come back to bite us on the arse as well uh, i don't know where she's going to stay with bristol in the champion i appreciate she's been uh, relegated but and i'll be honest though and i will throw this out there before you move to uh, um uh, and do as well i didn't realize that uh, ebony, ebony simon was going to be as good as she is and I was like, okay, makes sense. Yeah, wasn't wasn't really a WSL player. Totally wrong. So that that's another that's another good a good thing to consider. Really, uh, sometimes you can get the right player at the wrong time in their career, and you know you just got to put your hands up. But now I suppose it's good that Ebony's in an NWSL because she's not going to score against us again for all. <laughs> Well, I think he scored two goals in the two debut games. I think she, I think she came in uh, on, on the first. I don't know if you've seen it on Twitter or wherever you watch your football, but um, Ebony scored like within the first minutes of being on the pitch. I think um, in, in a debut game, absolutely brilliant. Scored again in the second game. Um, a lot of Barmy Army fans, a lot of Man United fans, really rate uh, Ebony, and they wanted to come back. Wanted to come back the season before. Wanted to come back now. Um, and it is a shame, and I think what you said there, Andy, about the right place at the right time or the wrong time, I still think that maybe going into the WSL for our first season, she probably wouldn't have got much game time. And if Ebony wanted game time, I can see why she would have left. Um, going into our third season, should we have maybe got her back? Possibly, but then obviously we've got Russo, Pless and Heath, so you can't argue with those three either. Um, Fuso, obviously, um, she had she didn't get much game time. It, it was tough, but I think now, all of a sudden, if she played for us now, she'd be in our maybe top two or top three strikers. Could argue maybe even higher. So it is just at the wrong time, isn't it? And it is and it is a shame. Um so yeah, I agree with the Ebony one. Um that's who I was going to say. Um Atano, do you want to just talk about it, uh, Jackie Gronin before we move on to any other player? Yeah, definitely. Jackie for me as well is one of the best players in this squad right now. And I, I, I'm just seeing Karen's uh, YouTube comment, and I agree to that. Jackie, Una, Russo, Togan, and uh, hopefully Boriza, if I'm pronouncing the name right. Uh, Sorry, so, we, we struggle, mate. Don't worry, trust me. <laughs> so, yeah, Karen's right. Like, like I, I agree with Ka what Karen said. And, yeah, I mean, uh, I agree to what John said earlier, that we shouldn't be changing captains if Katie Zillum were to stay. Uh, yes, I, I, I also want Jackie Gronin to be the captain, but it's something similar to what is happening in the fan base around the men's team that 
people want Bruno Fernandes to be the captain and when Harry Maguire is the captain. So I, I I think changing the captain when the earlier captain is there is will create a rift or you know they'll they lose confidence. The earlier captain might lose confidence that okay I was the captain and now I'm not. So yeah, I agree to what uh, John said that if KT Zilim were to stay, I I also would want KT Zilim to be the captain. Mm-hmm. And the midfield, it's going to be so hard. I mean, there's no guarantee that Kate is going to play next season. Nothing against her now, but with Barista coming in, with Lucy Stan ending the season really well, Ella Toon, Harry Lazard, yeah, Jackie there's only room for three. Even if you play like a, a four, like a, like a four as like a kind of diamond shape, you've still got you're still two midfielders, too many, aren't you? So um, I'm sure Barista not coming in to sit on the bench. Uh, you know, she's going to want to compete as well. So. I think it's going to be very tough for Katie next season, um, but it's going to be very tough for all of them, not just Katie. So it will be interesting to see. Um, and we'll probably have this conversation towards the end of the um before the season starts. Um, my second player, I can see everyone, it's on everyone's list. I've gone for Tolbin Heath. Um, I appreciate that, obviously, it's a, it's a massive signing, World Cup winner. I think she brought so much to the team, not just goals and how good she was on the pitch, but how good she was off the pitch as well. So to me, that was a great, um, a great signing. Oh, Atari's gone missing somewhere. Let's see if he comes back at some point. Um, but yeah, I think I think that I think you have to say that one with the impact that she has, with the amount of money that she probably bought in with um, shirt sales, fan base. For me, I think that was probably what has got to be maybe one of the top two or three. Um, Andy, your thoughts on on the Toby Heath one? It's funny because you, you always forget because obviously she's now unfortunately left us. But I think again she was a brilliant signing. A year ago, um, she she was she was a brilliant signing. And what you know we knew she had pedigree, but the thing that really endeared her to the fans, and the thing that really made it painful when she left, is that she was a brand new signing, but she had the United you know the United heart that we want. She kissed yeah. the badge. She apparently surprised, I think remember Casey saying in one of the interviews that she was coaching almost. She was sort of, you know, alongside Casey. She was, you know, in the stands. She was, you know, really, really hard working. And, you know, we have to remember, I mean, what the pandemic was like in January. You know, January's a horrible time in the UK anyway. You know, it goes dark at four o'clock. You know, it's very, it's, it's just it's horrible weather in Manchester, trust me. Um, but you know, she's in a foreign area, she was smashing it, and you know, a, a, and she would have been a great addition. The problem was, you know, um, it was always going to be for one season. Um, you know, it's possible she's going to appear again for Angel City, uh, alongside Christian if that gets going, uh, again, you know. Um, but I think, yeah, she was one of our best signings because she was quality and she was a goal scorer, but before she got injured. But also because of her attitude, she is what we want. She went in for every tackle. She kissed the badge. You know, people are talking about making a captain. I mean, not seriously, obviously. But like, it was just an idea of explaining the magnitude of people's feelings for the fans. You know, if you come into a new club and the fans want your captain a few months later and they haven't even physically seen you play in the stadium for us to camp. You know that's the impact that, that you can only dream of, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Tanya, would she be one of your top five signings? Mm, I, I I would go for Alessia Russo because the first game that I watched of uh, Manchester United women's team was the one in which we won four two against West Ham. Mm-hmm. Uh, Russo scored to a brace, and Tobin and Kristen got their first goals. So yeah, I, I think Russo. If Russo was fit, she would have been fighting with Kirby and Kerr for the golden boot. So I I really like Alessia Russo, and maybe if she was fit, we could have gotten the top three spot because there are there were times that when we failed to you know score that um, goal, and of course the defense was a bit shaky, but at the same time I think we missed players like Tobin Heath, Chris, um, Leah Galton, and Alessia Russo a lot. Mm. Um, Russo is joint fifth for me but um, with uh, somebody else which I'll talk about shortly but yeah Russo for me at the moment what Russo's got going for uh, when it comes to Man United at least 
we haven't seen him have a bad game yet, have we? Because she started the season really well and then she just got injured. And all we can hope for, and when we think of Alessia, is how good she was for those first, I don't know, maybe like six weeks or something, if that. Um, we saw her play it wide. We saw her play it up front. We saw how pacey she was, how strong she was. Uh, did she score a header as well? Maybe she did. I'll get in flashbacks. Maybe she did or she set up a header or something. But I just think that at the moment, she's got um, a lot of things going for her, even though she didn't play that many games. And I'm just hoping now that she can hit the ground running after her injury. It won't be easy. Um, she hasn't had much game time. Obviously, she's had a lot of recovery time now, which is what we need and what she needs. Um, she won't have had much time playing with the new players or with a new manager. Um, I just hope that the expectations that we've got of on Alicia, um, one, that it works out for her, but two, I also hope that some United fans don't put too much pressure on her now. Um, and this is myself included because I agree with you, Atari. I think last season, if she had stayed fit, she would have banged in a load of goals because she already did. Um, but it's been pretty much a year since she's played. You know, by the time we do get playing again, and I just hope that we don't put too much pressure on her to come straight in and hit the ground running again. Because to hit the ground running two seasons on the trot is, you know, it's, it's tough, isn't it? So for me, yeah, Alessia Russo, if I was going to buy a shirt, I'd probably get either Tunis down on the back or Russo down on the back. So I'm really hopeful that she's going to be with us for many years to come. And I think it's a fantastic signing. Um, do you want to speak about uh, Russo, Andy, before I go on to another name? Yeah, I mean, you might want to because I, I can just echo really both what both of you are saying. I mean, it was just such a, you know, it was such a, a gut gut punch when she got injured because mm. you know momentum's a big a big thing for a player of that position as well. And all you could have seen is the momentum going in a better direction. We might have had a better, um, you know, end to last season than, than we did if that was the case. You know, uh, I mean, I mean, I don't know who obviously who else you're going to say, but Ivana Fuso was a bit of a strange one because. I appreciate she's a lot younger than we remember than we remember actually, uh, and and I think she's definitely one. For and she could have done with a bit more game time uh, as well, but she might end up becoming um, another great signing for us. Uh, but yeah, definitely. I think if Natalie was here, I think Natalie would. Uh, I don't know if you put Fuzo in the top five, but I know she's very excited to see Fuzo play. Um, I think we all are. I think we're all looking forward to seeing what goal celebration she does as well. Um, we saw sparks, we saw how um, skillful she is, how quick she is with the ball. I was still, the jury, the jury was slow for me regarding the amount of goals she can score, um, only because we haven't seen much of her just yet. Um, I still think it's fair at, the, at this moment in time to put um, Russo as the number one striker and then Fuso, obviously the next one down. Obviously it depends who we bring in, of course. Fuzo excites me because we don't know what to expect and she's so energetic and so passionate and you can really see that she enjoys the game and enjoys being at United. I'm really excited to see Fuzo play. I just don't know at the moment if she's going to be able to bang in the same amount of goals as maybe Russo. But has she even been brought in for that reason? You know, Can she be brought in to play like a bit more of a number 10 role or play alongside somebody? So I guess the jury's still out on that one. We'll have to wait and see. Um, my other... No, that no one's really mentioned yet is Hayley Lad. Now, I'm going to mention this one because at the end of the championship season, we were crying out for some sort of rock solid holding midfielder going into the WSL. We never really had it, did we? And Hayley Lad come in, and then the first season, she was the um, WSL, sorry, she was the Man United player of the season in our, in our second season, first season in the WSL. I think we got top of the league last season for. A good few weeks by having Tooney, Jackie, and Hayley Lad in that midfield. Uh, I don't think that's any coincidence. I think the fans were crying out for Hayley Lad to play more games towards the second half of last season. I know for whatever reason she didn't, and I think it showed. I think the games where we come a little bit stuck last season or where we should have scored more goals is the games where Casey got a little bit maybe too adventurous and she played Katie Zellum, Jackie, and Tooney instead of. Uh, Hayley Ladd, and I couldn't understand why, because you probably didn't need Hayley Ladd against maybe Aston Villa in the first half, or was it Birmingham in the first half, one of them, but we couldn't score, we didn't look good, as soon as Hayley Ladd come on as a substitute, you know, in the second half, we got that stability, so for me, I just think Hayley Ladd, and I know if Rodney was on the show, I think he would be shouting out Hayley Ladd as well, she just goes unnoticed, because she's not a goal scorer, even though she has probably scored one of our best goals of all time, that Leicester, against Leicester, 
Um, I just think that she doesn't get the plays that she deserves. Um, so for me, she's definitely got to be in the county's top five. And they come to you first on Hayley Ladd. To be honest, I totally forgot that she was an original. Uh, yeah. It was it was only, you know, it was only when you mentioned it then. I was like, yeah, damn right. I mean, I think, um, you know, as Karen's saying, an unsung hero. Um, you know, I think John Fry was saying it was another another uh, player. But actually, she she is our Roy Key. I mean, one of the chants, I can hardly remember them. So we'll have to have a little refresher course before the, before the game starts in September. But Haley's going to get you. You yeah. know, she had that was one of the ones, and she has a very fit. She has that physicality in, in in midfield that can actually put people off and scare people a little bit. You know, and and we we need that. And again, just to sort of uh, link back to my sort of little rant or heated rant earlier in the show, she came from Birmingham. Just going to leave that hanging. Yeah. So you know, the next time we get someone who turned down Aston Villa or whatever. Mm-hmm. Good point, yeah. <laughs> Tony, I think you maybe just um, might have missed that side of it because that was like when, when you were probably just getting into it a little bit. So at the end of our first season, yeah. got I, I, first I agree season. to what Andy said. I also thought that she was an original 21, so I, I didn't take her name. <laughs> but uh, I, I agree to what John said, that she brings a lot of stability into the team. And towards the end of the season, she was injured, I think, and we didn't play her much. Uh, so I think the games that we lost towards the end were uh, the, the reason was we weren't playing lad. So that that's my reason. Uh, we've got a few minutes left, so I'm going to throw in two names. Uh, I think they've been mentioned in the comments, and I think Andy, you mentioned them as well. Um, Ona and Mary Earps. So the, the, the five names I've got, well, the six names I've got, because I can't separate the last two. I've got Jackie, Tobin, Lad, Ona, and then Earps and Russo. I think I need to go for Earth because she's been with us longer. But I'm really excited about what Russo could end up doing. So those are my six. But let's um we'll, we'll confirm everyone's five shortly. And then do you want to start off with uh Anna? Yeah, I mean again, similar to Hayley, Hayley Ladd, you know, the tackles that she made, the attitude that she plays with, it's almost like her football language is exactly what we want. You know, she she was a man of the you know, a candidate for the player of the match a lot of the times last season. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, met obviously with Mary as well. Um, it's funny because I don't know if it's a correlation to it or not, but when she was playing for England, most of the fan base was 100% behind her. Once Phil met, once Phil Neville, you know, fell out with her or whatever the situation was, it's hard to hard to tell. Then suddenly people started putting her under the microscope, even though. A lot, if you look at the stats, her statistics would still put her there and thereabouts, at least in an England squad, if not, you know, obviously starting. Um, but yeah, I would say, I would say, yeah, I would be basically shadowing what John's saying. Um, the honor and and um, and and Mary Earps, you know, would definitely be on in it, definitely there. And as you say, Russo is is, is just going to be a question mark, but we've seen enough to hopefully make it a question mark because we just haven't seen it yet rather than a question mark will she won't she be good or not mm. Tanya do you want to kind of end the show on um on what you think of honor and Mary Earps and maybe just give your top five yeah I think honor has been like deservedly won the women's player of the year and she has been fantastic for us I, I remember that uh, tackle in the Chelsea game where she pushed away Fran Kirby I think so that 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 was like th- that was amazing, and about Mary Earps, I think uh, I, I I might be a bit you know biased here, but I like Emily Ramsey a lot uh, because you know she she's she's from United the academy product, and I think she has a bright future for us. But at the same time, Mary Earps is a bit more stable because she is more experienced, so that brings out that whole experience and youth uh, debate uh, again and. Yeah, she has been good for us, but let's see. I, I really want to see Emily Ramsey in goal for around five, six games in a row. She's got competition and she might even go out alone next season as well and come back stronger, hopefully. Um, Bagley rumoured to be coming in. I think that's possibly, I'm not going to say it's a done deal, but I think from what people are saying who know stuff, um, I think I think Bagley will be in. And I think that'll be big competition for Earps. And then when 
Rambo does come back off loan because it looks like Rambo is going out on loan. I think she'll hopefully come back stronger. I think our goalkeeper situation is all of a sudden going to be quite good this time next season. Um, so, yeah, Atana, your top five uh, signings, what, who would you say? Jackie first, uh, second token, third, Ona, fourth, uh, Russo, and fifth, uh, Haley Lad. Andy? It's like a memory test, isn't it? Right, okay, okay. so... Uh, yeah, Jackie, uh, Haley Lad, Ona, Mary, and Russo. No, so Tobin. No, no Tobin. Oh yeah, she's gone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know. You know what? You know what? Let's 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 let let's say uh, Russo and, uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah. No. Put away. Yeah. Put away. You want to be? We'll, we'll, do, we'll <laughs> do that again. We'll do that again. Jackie, Tobin, lad, on a, and I say, uh, but I do think that Russo will probably end up going uh, into that top five as well. That's my. Yeah. John, you okay. said that uh, the name that you know you are sad about, you know, who left United. So, one name that uh, that comes to my mind is Lizzie Arnott. I, I saw a few games of Rangers this season because a okay. uh, player from India plays there, Bala Devi. So, okay. I, I yeah, I watched a few games and she, she was the top scorer in the Scottish League. So, I, I really think if, if it worked out for us, maybe we would be not looking for a striker this season. I think Lizzie had quite a few fans um, when she was with us, and obviously she scored um, the goal against Liverpool, which was one of our first goals. I think once I think Alex Green was set her up, and uh, that you know whenever we see Lizzie on it again, if ever we do, we, we will still sing that name. I just think that she just never got much game time um, in the WSL uh, in that first season. Um, I think Jessica Sigsworth kind of got ahead of her. Hansen got ahead of her. Um, obviously, Galton on the opposite side. I think that's probably what Casey was thinking, that she was probably just not going to get much game time. So, to help Lizzie out, um, you know, she need, needed to go elsewhere. And obviously, the quality that we brought in, she wouldn't have probably got much game time last season. But it's never good to see any of your players go. Um, you know, I'll, I'll say now, I, I really like Molly Green up until um, she ended up celebrating Liverpool winning the league. I don't always say that. And I still, I still like Molly now. She's rumoured to be going to Coventry. Um, it's confirmed. She's, is it she's confirmed? She's, so, okay, so yeah. I don't need to say that. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, you know, there's a few players who have left to, well, that we've got connections with, or, you know, Molly signed my shirt. Um, so, I, Molly and Millie were my favourite players of that first season. So, um, when I went on the second season, I got the championship shirt and Molly and Millie signed it. Um, and it just didn't work out for Molly either, did it? But I think this is a separate show. I think we need to go down memory lane on a separate show because we have come to the end of the show now. Um, yeah, Karen, in the comments, um, I wonder why Karen knows a bit about uh, Rangers and, and, and Scottish football. Maybe um, we'll have to uh, we'll have to figure that one out. Anyone who doesn't know Karen, you need to get to know Karen. Um, thank you to everybody in the comments. Andy, Atano, thank you very much for joining me. I know the Euros are on, so we can get back to watching that if that's what you want to do. Atano, if anybody wants to find you or the United Star, how can they do that, mate? Yeah, I'm on Twitter at the rate of Atanu underscore seven four, and uh, in my bio you can see the YouTube link and the profile link of United Star as well. So subscribe to that as well. Excellent. And if anybody wants to talk to you on Twitter, how can they go about doing that? I worry they might now actually after the beginning part of this uh, this show. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, obviously just just my initials really, as you can see on the screen, AJ underscore eighty seven. Um, it's my personal Twitter, so it varies massively, but certainly there's a lot of United content on there, um, and more so when the, when the team uh, when the team starts again in September. Excellent. Um, you can find me uh, on Twitter, John Foster MUFC. The show on tomorrow night. It's um, Matt and Ben Saturday Night Live. Uh, it's not actually live, unfortunately. I think that'll be out and about, unfortunately. So I don't think it's live, but it, it will go up uh, on YouTube. Uh, so get into the comments on there at seven o'clock. And then we'll start off next week uh, on Monday. I believe Natalie's back with us after gallivanting around London. Uh, she's had a nice week off, to be honest. She's uh, not missed many announcements. I think she knew that, to be honest. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next week. So thank you very much and see you very soon.